Join the team. Hey Team McGuire Review, and today we're going to take a look at a really cool, very low cost, very quick little card game. Uh, it is called Star Wars Java's Palace, and this is based on a love letter card game. So if you know that game, it was made some time ago. This is another kind of um, reskin of that game, you can say, and it's done in the Star Wars theme. And I absolutely love it. I think it's great greatly themed especially with the whole Jabba's palace kind of theme so all the cards you're going to get are all around sort of that what you would find in Jabba's palace very very cool components are high quality like i said cards are nice and thick artwork is awesome you've got these little plastic victory tokens you know they could have just used little cardboard shits but they went the extra mile and made little plastic with a uh, little Jabba palace printing on them and they're nice thick little tokens those are pretty cool and you get those as victory points when you win round to round first player with uh i believe with uh, with four of these for a four player game let's look right here because that's the win condition um is based on how many players there are there's a little chart inside of this tiny little rule book uh yes so for four players if you have four of these you win so essentially that means that you've won four of the rounds and the rounds do go very quick I will hit really quickly uh, the little Star Wars bag here as well. Awesome. Felt high quality, really thick. Uh, obviously, it's to hold the game. The game all goes back into this little pouch, snugly like this, which is nice. Uh, but you can use this pouch as a little dice pouch uh, or a little dice bag if you, if you want to. Okay? Really high quality, nice little bag there. Okay, rules are very simple. They're all in this little bit here. There is a little uh, code to scan as well. Uh, to learn to play so you can scan that if you don't want to read like literally this this tiny little you know right but if you don't want to read that you can scan you're going to have these cards here that are going to be your agendas and you're going to select one of these at the beginning of the game they're all really cool and they just list off different types of win conditions so for example here with uh, c3po exalted one highest number in hand wins the round so when the round comes to an end the highest number in hand is the person that wins that round uh, my kind of scum which we got java here on the artwork highest number um, of the uh, we'll say the java's palace and the rebels in hand both win the round so there are some symbols at the bottom of these cards here that will indicate kind of two different sides and uh, some of these win conditions will depend on the symbols here that maybe you have played over the course of the round or that you actually have in your hand. So when you start the game, you're just going to select one of these. You're going to put it out. It stays the same for every single round. This one's called Jabba's Court. Uh, it's pretty cool. So you can put that out. It does stay the same. You do not uh, re replace that every round. And these are now out of the game. That way, that game to game, it kind of mixes it up because it, di it gives a different win condition. There are these reference cards, which each player can get. This game supports up to uh, six, which is nice. Two to six players. There's a little bit of a different setup when there's two players and there are any others, and I'll show that here in a second, but you do get to know exactly how many of each type of card are in the game. And everything that's ever played in the game, you always leave face up. It always stays out face up so everybody can see. Now the benefit to that is the more and more you play this game, you'll know all the cards that are here, and you can then start to, it's almost like counting cards, you can, you can kind of start knowing you know, what cards other people probably have or do not have based on the agenda that you're going for. And it might help you win if you're really paying attention to what's already been played or what may not have been played yet. So that's the reason why these reference cards list out all of the cards. It's It, it will actually tell you what the card does as well. It gives you the little, the little bit ability of that card. But these are really nice, and the more and more you play this game, that's what makes this game, I think really fun and strategic over time when you first start to play this game it's just super simple super fun and it sort of feels like anybody can really be the winner because it is based on the draw of the cards uh, but you do have to be strategic on how and when you want to play your cards but once you really start to play a lot then you start to kind of memorize the cards and then it gets very strategic on what you choose to do and, th and that's a whole sort of second level or second phase of this game that I think it's a lot of fun if you play it a lot. So there are 19 of these cards here. You're going to shuffle them up. 
and you're you're normally just going to take one card off the top. You're not going to show it. You won't know what that is. And then everybody will get dealt one card, um, and then you will start the game. You will you will draw a card, and then you will play one of the cards in your hand. That that's literally all you'll do when it's your turn. If there are two players in the game only, what you actually do is a little bit different. Is you will draw three cards off the top. You'll turn all three of them over so you can see exactly what they are, and then you will you will start to play the game. So that's the only difference. You're just going to deal everybody out. Uh, a card. Let's say there's four players. And then when it is your turn, you're going to draw a card. You're going to look at both of your cards. And then you are going to play one of them in your hand. And only one of those cards you will play. So you'll look at the cards. I've got the guard and R2-D2. And you'll basically decide, well, based on what they do, the guard, choose another player and guess a number. If they have that number in their hand, they are out for the round immediately. So you could say, hey, uh, player number player number four uh, and you'll see that cards have numbers on them. Player number four, do you have a card that's a three? And if they do have a card that's a three that's in their hand, they're immediately out of this round. So the guard is nice if you get that number right. R2-D2, either look at the face-down set-aside card or choose another player and look at their hand. So you can look at this card to then know what it is for the rest of the game. That's pretty sweet. Or you can look at a card in another player's hand. So... In, in this situation, what I would probably choose is to see what this is, especially if I've played this game a bunch and I've kind of memorized what all the cards are. I'd want to know which one of these cards is out of the deck for this game. Okay, so that's, what, that's an example of what these cards do. They're all very basic like that. They just read exactly what they do. You play one of them and you do that. Um, and again, <clears throat> that may be a benefit for you. It may be a benefit like these to see things people have, or it may go directly to the agenda and give you some, you know, point for the round if it is for the agenda. So let's say I played R2-D2 uh, and I decided to look at this card. Oh, okay, it's the mercenary, so I know that. Uh, I'll put that back down. I'm the only one that sees that. This card stays played face up. And now it is the next person's turn, which they would draw a card and they would play one of their two cards. And basically it would go around until all the players are knocked out except for one player. Uh, and that would be very easy to know based on what the cards say and what happens over the course of the round. And then if you are the last person in, then you would take one of these victory points. And again, for a four-player game, you've now set up another round. And maybe someone else wins the next round and someone else wins the next round. The whole game isn't over until one player has acquired four of the victory tokens and then Jabba Palace Star Wars is over again this is an awesome game two to six players super fast Z-Man Games is on this one and it does come at an extremely low cost so I highly recommend picking this up if you like the Star Wars theme you're getting the Jabba here it's pretty pretty sweet and it's low cost with high quality and it's a lot of fun that can be played over and over and over and over and i just love these games that are really fast that can just be played lots of times so really really well done z-man games java's palace check it out keep rolling them crits and we'll see you next time